Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Chrissy Seaton and why thank God? That's what we're going to think about and discuss in this video today. So why give thanks to God? Well, to find out more about that and, and the actual common sense, apart from the spiritual reason, we're going to delve into another couple of pages of this book called To Perfect the World. And this is uh, a book but primarily written for Jews in how they um, talk to and teach the Noahide laws, the Noahide code to Gentiles. But I think that we, as there are enough Noahides around in the world today, that we should be taking a lesson from this as well in reaching out to other uh, Gentiles. So we're continuing on and this um, section I'm reading today is about the obligation for us to pray as Noahides. Now, we're not required to pray in uh, the rigid way that Jews are, uh, and that's been discussed in a previous video I've done some time ago. But it, it, we are, so there are obligations of, for when we should pray, and that is what we're going to discuss in this video. So, and this is uh, on page, it begins on page 157 of this book and uh, it just goes on here and opens quite vividly and in our face and says that belief in God necessitates us to engage in regular prayer. Now what does that actually mean? So let's just take a look at this and say that um, the logic uh, logic within a refined individual would tell us that it is just good manners to thank for what we receive. If we are in trouble to ask for help, uh, we would do that with our family or other human beings, people in our neighbourhood. Well, why wouldn't you ask God for those things and say, look, Hashem, um, you've given me this beautiful food. Uh, it, it's the hands that harvested it. Please bless them. Uh, the hands that cooked it. Please bless them. Thank you for this food that um, will make me healthy and make me strong. Thank you. Hashem for the water you have created because your understanding is and, and your belief is at this point in time that there is only one God. There is no deputies or substitutes or somebody else you go through. There's just Hashem. That's all. And so... When we pray, that's who we're praying to, the one, the only true God who created everything in this world and created this world to be settled by Jews and Gentiles. So let's go on. It says, <clears throat> I'm going to read a few sections out of this. It says um, that... Uh, Influencing Gentiles entails bringing them to reject idol worship, which I've mentioned. It goes on and says, For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Now, there's biblical references to this down in the description box below. Uh, and that particular reference is Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. Now, this goes on and says that... Um, this this actual verse would imply that we influence all mankind. In other words, to recognise and believe that there is only one God creator, maker of all things, director of the universe, etc. So a Gentile should begin his or her day with that thought about the creator being the director of all things in this universe. 
and that what's more I should pray to him at least in your mind anyway and thank them for that thank them for giving you a new day thank you for the challenges and the blessings that you'll receive throughout this day you know it's it's common courtesy that's what it is so <clears throat> There is a God in this world, for everything was created by his word. And we've learned that enough times, but I think we always keep needing to uh, go back and remind ourselves and reflect on that. So you just look out your window now that everything you see, even the houses next door, the materials to create those houses were created by Hashem whether they be brick, timber, uh, slate, uh, corrugated iron, tiles, whatever. All the raw materials that create those things are only due to God's grace. That, that's where they, everything comes from. <clears throat> so everything is created by him. Um, And we also understand that one should bless God before we eat. And we should just say thank you very much when receiving a gift. So if someone gives you a gift, you say, look, thank you so much. You just don't say, oh, okay, and, you know, toss it in the corner. Yeah, this is what refinement and manners is about. It's knowing that there are etiquette that we uh, are meant to apply to our fellow human beings. So how much more grace and etiquette should we extend to our loving father a lot more shouldn't we so and it says here that a refined child knows that first one expresses thanks for their gift and only then does he enjoy it says it all doesn't it it goes on and says the concept of giving thanks is necessary for a civilised society. <clears throat> All specifics are related to civilising the world, for it says he formed it to be settled, uh, it's the duty to offer thanks for that, for settling of this world. Um, the, and it applies to Gentiles as well as Jews. So... It's a biblical obligation, a biblical obligation, and hence why thank God. Well, it is a common sense obligation that you and I both should be doing regularly and most definitely when we're in need or in danger or in trouble. We need definitely commanded without doubt to call upon Hashem's help. So let's continue on. It says that, um, <clears throat> well, we should give thanks for where we live and, and how we come about our home, etc. And I just quote an example here in the United States, you have Thanksgiving Day. So the whole country actually comes together, I believe, in a, in a wonderful way and gives thanks uh, to God. Uh, for country and, and family and fellow man and because, you know, it's part of God's creation. Uh, we don't have exactly the same in Australia but we have what we call an Australia Day and that's a day when there's a lot of barbecuing and stuff like that and that would be an appropriate time for us as Noahides, as Gentiles, to say it's Australia Day. Thank you, Hashem, for giving us this country. Although at the moment there's a little bit of, quite a bit of improvement that, that could be done. But uh, <clears throat> we'll sidestep that for the moment. So um, we, we must be thankful for all things. It's not just, oh, look at that glorious garden. Oh, thank you, God, for that, which we should do. But it's also thanking for the things that, oh, I've got to do this today. But thank you. Thank you, Shem. I know that I will benefit from this. I know there is a reason I will need to do this and do it properly. Um, 
Now, even people who aren't religious, they'll say, or what have you, most of them would admit to you that when they're in trouble, they call out to God and make some reference to him for help or whatever. So uh, just, you know, keep that at the back of your mind also. So we go on and learn that the world was created in order to make this dwelling place in what they call the lowly realms down here on earth um, in God's physical world. And this dwelling is particularly accomplished when Gentiles are inspired to praise God. Now, you can praise God about everything. Praise God because of the beautiful day. Praise God because, oh, we got rain and we needed it. So we're all, and thankful for it. Praise and thanks for what's going on. It then goes on and says, um, uh, even those who originally obstructed meaning obstructed acknowledging that there is one and only true God, will become transformed into assistance and sources of blessings consistent with the verse. And this is the verse. And uh, this is um, verses from Deuter uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7, verse 14. Again, it'll be in the description box below. You, meaning the Jewish people, shall be blessed by all the nations when the purpose of the world's creation that God desired a dwelling place in the lowly realms, in the lowest of all levels, this physical world will be fulfilled. So that um, just really ties it together in a nutshell, doesn't it? Now... What we need to understand about this, that it's no good uh, saying, oh, yes, I, I, you know, I thank God, if you've got no concept in your mind of who God is or what God is. Uh, you've got to acknowledge that there is one and only true God, just one God, one God. Now, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is some people who have left another faith or, or have been of no significant faith before or belief um, find it hard to know how to start talking to Hashem. Well, I say just that, just start talking. Um, but sometimes you need to sort of get yourself in the frame of mind to quiet your mind down. And I know I've spoken about this little book before, but I just want to mention it again because it is appropriate at this point uh, to mention it. Now, there is a wonderful little prayer book. Uh, it's a personal prayer book, this is. So it's just uh, prayers about certain things. I'll let you know some of them in a minute. It's a pocket size. It's not expensive. And there'll be a link in the description box below where you can obtain a copy. Uh, just off the top of my head, I'm not sure of the cost, but it's not expensive. Uh, it, it's, it's so appropriate for one person just to give them, it's called Prayers, Blessings, Principle of Faith and Divine Service for Noah Hides. It's available through asknoah.org. And um, if you um, go there, you can find out more about this and now what it's got, it's got, it, ha it contains blessings before eating and drinking, for instance. So it gives you an idea what to say. And, and it says, uh, before eating bread, for example, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. So there you go. That's an example. There's a prayer for the repentant, if you're sorry or want to, Talk to God about something. Uh, there's a whole list of things in the introduction. Awareness of God and the Noahide path. Serving God with one's mind and heart. And the power of personal repentance. Then it goes through and has some appropriate daytime prayers, evening prayers. Blessings, of course, before eating or drinking. There are other blessings of thanks to God. And... Um, there's verses for children to learn. There's prayers for a lot, your own livelihood. Prayers for travelling. Prayers for a sick person. 
a newborn baby, gentile baby, or even a departed soul. So there's quite an extensive uh, list of um, praises, blessings, etc., that you can go to in this little book that if you're stuck or don't know where to begin, it just gives you a bit of a jump start and uh, it takes you away from what you may have originally had uh, if you're in another faith or if you have never been um, close to Hashem before or never uh, felt a need to communicate and converse with Hashem, then this just gives you a little bit, you don't have to follow it word by word, but it gives you a bit of a start. It uh, helps you get into that conversational mode. And I've so I've said many times before in other videos, often some of my best prayers are done when I'm driving because there's no one else uh, there to distract me. I'm just watching the road and I picture Hashem in the passenger seat with me, which I know he always is with us when we, whatever we're doing. And so that's my time to chat with Hashem. And that can be n certainly not formalised prayers. It's just having a conversation with Hashem. And that's what we are expected to do. We don't have ritualistic prayers, we must say, at set times like the Jews do, uh, nor do we, uh, are we expected to. But it is a refined person, a person who, uh, a Gentile who has come to the understanding that there is a true and one only true God, then there is an obligation for us to be grateful, to be thankful, to praise our Creator and to try to make ourselves a better person. So while we have a tremendous a, amount of freedom, we also, as a human being, we have responsibilities and we need to be mindful of those responsibilities. So praying for our needs, thanking for our dwelling, for where we live, uh, uh, if you're in any danger or you're not well or you you know you've lost your job or you're going for a job interview, all those things, you're going to need Hashem's help. You're going to need that inner, I don't know, uh, comfort and knowledge that he's there. You know, he's here beside you. So we certainly um, pray for our needs, uh, thank Thank, be thankful for everything that comes our way and also thank thank Hashem on behalf of other people too. You know, like uh, we've been praying for a particular friend of ours, uh, our women's group, and uh, she's improved out of sight. And I, I thank Hashem so much because, you know, he's heard our prayers uh, he's heard her prayers and, you know, there, there, there's an improvement. And so it's, it's, it's prudent and good manners to thank Hashem for that. Just as if someone was doing us a great favour or, or helping us, we w w wouldn't dream of not thanking them for that, would we? And so we should be doing the same in our relationship with Hashem. Now... So I want to uh, continue on a bit more with this book because I think there's a couple of things or more than a couple of things in here that really at uh, this particular point in time I think jumps out at us uh, or does me and I think it's most important that we are mindful of the um, importance to unite mankind and to work towards peace worldwide. I know it doesn't sound as though we can do that at times, but it all starts with thanking God for what we have now and then increasing what we converse with him about. You know, asking that minds come to understand the importance of world peace. And God willing, it will come in our time. In the meantime, please take care and God bless.